What's happening, YouTube? Came back with another how-to video coming to you straight from Quentin. And today, I'm gonna be replacing the clutch safe cylinder. You can know your clutch cylinder is bad by a few different ways: leaking brake fluid, you have problem with the clutch pedal, you have problems shifting. But the biggest reason is if you come over here, this is your brake master cylinder. This is your clutch master cylinder. And if you can see, it is real, real contaminated in there. That's supposed to be clear fluid. This is your brake slave master, and this is your clutch slave master. Contaminated brake fluid is a clear sign that your slave cylinder is bad. Let's go underneath the car to inspect the slave cylinder. Okay, this is my slave master. And as you can see right there, we got a big crack with a rubber. Now it's good to know that you have brake fluid constantly running through this, this rubber boot. And over time, it gets very hard and brittle. Looky. Can literally just pull it open with my fingers. That's just falling apart in my hands. I also know my clutch fork boot is bad. I'm also gonna be replacing this too, but for sure this clutch cylinder has to go. Okay, let's go over the tools you're gonna need. I use a small breaker bar with the 12 mil socket. You're gonna need an eight millimeter wrench. This is a specialty tool. This is called a brake line wrench. Bro, just trust me, if you don't use this, there's a 70, 30% chance you are going to strip the brake line and you're gonna have yourself a bigger job than you expected. This was about $8. The stock are gonna be a 10 millimeter. Mine was an 11, this has both. After cracking the two 12 millimeter bolts holding in the cylinder, I was able to take them out with my hands. If not, I would've used a 12 millimeter swivel ratcheting wrench. You're not gonna see me use this in the video, but in case your threads might be rusted or not cleaned, it might take one of these to get it all the way out. You're gonna need some brake fluid. If you're going solo, you're gonna need some type of bleeding reservoir system. This is a simple tube, Arizona bottle, with the hole drill middle and a breathing hole breathing a hole you're also going to need a new slave cylinder and i also replaced the clutch fork boot because we already had the cylinder off the clutch cylinder is only being held down by two 12 millimeter bolts one right there on the top and one at the bottom the previous owner did replace this brake line otherwise it's exactly the same as stock we're going to start by removing this line first make sure you have some kind of catch can underneath because brake fluid is going to leak out of here and you do not want to get that anywhere we're going to use our 10 millimeter brake line wrench to loosen her up unfortunately i don't have jacks or jack stands so we are still using the ramps it would be super helpful to get to them right there if we had jacks we'd be able to take off this wheel and access that bolt right there but we don't but if y'all do have a jack in and jack stands i I recommend jacking it up and taking off the passenger wheel. Grab our 10 mil brake line wrench, go over the line. Oh damn, mine's actually an 11. So if you have stock, it's gonna be a 10. Mine is actually an 11. Good thing this wrench has both. And you're gonna go ahead and loosen the line by pulling up. <sighs> there you go. Okay, you can see it's already leaking after two turns. You can't see, but I have my black oil pan underneath. So it's okay to go ahead and let it leak. I'm trying to nut with my hand right now. There you go, a few more threads and this baby should be out. And there we go. And I'm just gonna allow brake fluid to drip all right there and into the pan. Be gone, black fluid. Looking good. All right, starting to take off the two 12 millimeter bolts, starting with the bottom nut. We have the mini breaker bar on there with the 12 mil socket. Gonna crack it loose. Easy peasy. I think she's ready to be hand tightened off. Yeah, just like that. Back it all the way out. All right, we're gonna get to that top one from up top. Okay, you can't really see it, but we're taking off the top and last 12 mil nut. See right there, my socket is over it. It's on it now, right there. And we're just pulling up on the breaker ball. Oh, that one was nice and easy. I was scared I was going to hurt myself. Okay, now we're just going to back that bolt off using our fingers. Okay, I just took... Ooh, it's falling. Okay, I'm just going to let it drop. Got the nut. I did use a socket on there to help me turn it a little bit easier. There we go. Okay, our clutch cylinder fell right in our pan. There it is, completely off. We're gonna go ahead and slide off this old boot. This is just covering the fork. Cool, let it drop in there. Okay, this is everything we just pulled off. This is the old fork boot. The reason why mine wasn't fitted on right, I learned that these are actually made with all natural rubber 
and with age, time, and oil running through it, brake fluid, sorry, these actually expand, and once they are removed off the mount, I guess, that they're supposed to be on, they do not conform back. So you actually have to replace it. Once you remove these, you have to replace it. You can see I try to make it fit by squishing it for the time being. This is the old cylinder. You can see how the cylinder blew just completely deteriorated over time. That's horrible. Uh, it's still falling apart in my hands. So we're not salvaging anything. The only thing I think I'm going to keep is this little cap. Because sometimes these fall off the nipple. And they're good to have around. Alright, let's check out the new parts. This is OEM from Mazda. But I got this on eBay. Links will be in the description for both of these down below. This is the slave cylinder. This is an aftermarket brand. Got it off Amazon for about $15. With shipping, this was about $20. When you take it out the box, it's going to come in these two pieces. This tube goes inside the boot. But don't just leave it like this. Make sure you put the boot around this trench mold right here. Just like that. You can see it's identical from the stock. Got your two 12 millimeter holes right here. This is where you will thread your brake line. And this is the eight millimeter nipple that we are gonna use to bleed the system. All right, installation is the reverse uninstallation. Let's start with the boot. All right, let's compare the clutch fork boot. Man, you would think that was a different size. Look at how expanded it is on the back. I don't know if you're able to tell a good difference on camera, but in person, you can really see that difference. Let's just line up the square. There you go. Lined up with that corner in the back. You can see the different size. It's possible when they change that clutch brake fluid line, may have accidentally sipped off the fork boot and then completely just ruined it. You can see our slave cylinder with a nice new boot on it. You can really see how the brake fluid just really ate all that up. Alright, let's install the boot. Alright, install the boot. We're just going to slip it right over the fork. Slide the fork through the open hole. And you want to tuck the boot in into the transmission. Okay, now that we have the fork boot nice and seated, we're going to go ahead and install our slave master and put our 12 millimeters on these two holes. Okay, with my left hand, I'm just going to hold it in. Make sure you put that ball point into the fork, just like so. And I'm going to thread in the top bolt. There you go, I just got it seated there. Now for the bottom. Perfect. Okay, with my 12 sock on the brake bar, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. You don't want it too tight, but tight enough where it ain't going nowhere. And I can get the top one from right here, so I'm going to. Just to save me the trip up. Tighten down that top bolt right there. Give it one more good time. There you go, she ain't going nowhere. Since I'm in a good, comfortable spot to do so, I'm going to go ahead and remove this rubber cap covering the threads, and we're going to thread in our brake line. Okay, after you got it hand tightened enough, go ahead and put your brake line wrench on it and give it a good turn. You do not want to strip this, but make sure it's nice and tight. And that's perfect right there. And that's the clutch fork boot and clutch master cylinder replaced. Okay, now we're working on the last step, which is to bleed the system. If you got a buddy with you, you can do it two man and let the fluid leak all over the floor like an animal. Or you can do it like me and collect it all in a bottle and safely dispose of it in your neighbor's bushes later. First, what you want to do is you're going to want to fill up the bottom with just a little bit of clean brake fluid. It's important that your tube stays submerged throughout the entire process. You don't want any way for air to get back into the system. Okay, let's go put this sand on the nipple. We're going to start by removing the nipple cover. There you go. Next, we're going to grab our 8mm wrench and slip it right over the nipple. 
You can push it far down the nipple and you can move it freely. And you just slide it up to the middle to start turning. Now we're gonna put our tube over the nipple. All right, I have the bottle sitting underneath the car with the hose attached to the nipple. And with our eight millimeter wrench, ready to loosen and tighten the valve. Go ahead and get your dot three brake fluid. Before I pour some in there, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it a little bit. Okay, nice and clean. Now let's fill her up. Good idea to use a funnel. I overfilled it by a little bit, not a problem. Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and open the valve. Slide the eight onto the nut. And there you go. We just open the valve. I'm gonna give it one more turn to fully open it. There you go. That should do it right there. Don't wanna make it too loose. It's not gonna go down because the clutch fork is still holding in that slave cylinder shut. To push out the air through the system, get into the driver's seat, and you wanna keep clutching in. It's very loose right now. But you just wanna make sure you're pumping in all the fluids. You can see air bubbles already starting to come up. All right, I'm gonna leave the camera right here so we can see all the fluid being flushed out. The pedal's starting to get stiff. It's good after a few clutch kicks. You go over and check your reservoir. You do not want it to get past that hole to where air gets sucked back in. Then you have to re-bleed the entire system. So after about five to 10 kicks, come over to the reservoir and check it and refill if needed. After you feel the pedal getting stiff and you're seeing no bubbles, just some clean fluid running through here, it's safe to close the valve. When you take off the tube, make sure you want to pinch it and then wiggle it off. Hold the hose up and let all the fluid run down into the bottle. Okay, go ahead and take off the wrench, off your valve, and make sure you cover the valve hole with the nipple cap. And there you go. Make sure to top your fluid levels off and close the cap. I'm going to top her off too. There you go. Got both babies at their max line. Take a look at all the contaminant fluid that came out of there. <sighs> By the way, if you're wondering why you're hearing all these fireworks and sirens, it's because it's the 4th of July today. But that's it. That's all it is. That's the clutch slice cylinder replaced and clutch fluid bled. It should be working perfectly now. And since we topped off the reservoir, the e-brake light should go out in the car. Thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy. I really hope it helped y'all out. So glad I changed these parts. This was doing nothing to keep debris out. So happy I changed this. Happy I got all that nasty contaminant fluid out. In case you guys were wondering, I barely used half of this big jug. I didn't mind having some laying around, so I got the big one. I hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all enjoyed, go ahead and subscribe because we come out videos weekly for all your how-to car needs. With that being said, guys, I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.